Fifty miles to the east of the Ramblin' Rose is the 113-foot Time Bandit. Mike Rowe can often be found hard at work in a place that isn't dirty at all. There's no better job than sitting in a climate-controlled booth, reading stories of, in this case, a crab fisherman in a crisp, well-modulated baritone. My name's Mike Rowe, and this is my job. And this is my job. And this is my job. But as the star of the Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs, Rowe has become famous as the guy who cleans out septic tanks. Okay, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen or ever done. Picks up garbage. Oh, oh my, I don't oh. know. And examines the stomach contents of the Lake Erie water snake. That's just weird. The point of the show is not to, it's not to produce a big story. It's to just show you what happens if you're a bridge painter over a 12-hour day. A reality show that's really real. I can't put it much better. On Dirty Jobs, Roe highlights the dignity that can be found in hard work, often by risking his own dignity. I'm glad you came. Like, everybody thinks it's so easy. <gasps> I got ants in the pants, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> you know, viewers uh, cut me a lot of slack uh, because I was willing to try. And that was a big lesson, you know, that I learned early on. If you let people see you fail, or at least see you try, it's shocking what they'll forgive. <laughs> I hate my job. Ah, oh, that sucks. Since Dirty Jobs went on the air in 2005, Roe has taken on some 300 jobs. Okay, that looks good. It's got me. <laughs> on some jobs, the dirt can be overshadowed by the odors. There comes the smell. Oh, smelliest. Skulls Unlimited in Oklahoma. Uh, do you smell this? Oh, yes. They boil the animal in a giant pot to get all the flesh off of the bones. There you go. Oh. It gets on your teeth and then in the back of your throat. Till it stays with you. It gets in your clothes, gets in your hair. The jobs may stink, literally, but Roe often reminds us most are vital for the smooth functioning of society, like collecting garbage in the narrow lanes of San Francisco's Chinatown, where Roe struggled to keep up with Lawrence Jackson III. He doesn't look like it, but he's one of the most devastating athletes you'll meet. His resting heart rate's about 30. Because all he does, it's the midnight Chinatown run. And he runs with this sack over his shoulder. He's like a demented Santa Claus. Up and down the steps, night after night after night. Rowe got his first exposure to the skills of the working man when he was growing up in the countryside near Baltimore and living next door to his grandfather, Carl Noble. He could fix anything, a brilliant mechanic. He only went to the eighth grade, but he was one of the smartest guys I knew. You know, I, I wanted very much to be able to do what my, my grandfather could do. So I took all the shop classes in high school and all that stuff. But the, the sad truth for me is I just, I didn't, get the, uh, I didn't get the gene. In fact, my grandfather said to me, he said, you should really look into getting a, another sort of toolbox. And so I did. Instead of working with his hands, Roe started working with his voice. Vecchia zimara senti, il resto al pianto, scende re sacria montio devi. For almost five years, starting in 1984, he sang with the Baltimore Opera Company, although he claims his audition was awful. My pronunciation's terrible. I only get 30% of the notes. But I think they were just impressed that I actually walked in and, and actually tried to sell it. Precious moments. Hope your day is full of them. His ability to sell landed him his first TV job in the late 1980s, overnight on QVC. Interesting scheduling this evening. Clarence in for an hour, Steve Bryan in for an hour, Mike Rowe in for four hours. How does that work? I don't know. In 2001, Rowe was hired to host Evening Magazine on the local CBS station in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs>
It wasn't really meant to be a comedy show, but Roe's sense of the ridiculous was hard to contain. Good evening, and welcome back. Roe and his Evening Magazine producer James Reed sometimes held business meetings at a nearby bar. One day, over beer, they had an idea for a segment called Somebody's Gotta Do It. It, it was a little bit of Plimpton, a little bit of Studs Terkel, and, and a little bit of Charles Kuralt, too. Telling a really simple story with, you know, anonymous people who live in towns you couldn't find on a map. Over a couple of beers. Over a couple of beers. And two days later, we were uh, artificially inseminating a cow. <laughs> you really got to gotta lean into it there, huh? Yeah, some of them are tighter than others, you know. Somehow, viewers seemed to like the segments, and Roe figured maybe it could be made in. into a show all its own. I'm going in. The bosses at CBS turned this down. The bosses at the other networks, Everybody. broadcast networks, turned oh, it yeah. down. Yeah, it was... Um, it was too gross for CBS. It wasn't gross enough for Fox. Um, it wasn't funny enough for Comedy Central. It was too funny for PBS. But it was just right for the folks at the Discovery Channel with one small change. They said, we'll call it Dirty Jobs. I said, fine. We started shooting. We put it on the air. People watched. And then they ordered 300 more. And now I don't know how to stop it. Oh, God. Dirty Jobs has made him possibly the most prominent commercial pitch man on TV right now. He helps sell Ford trucks. He promotes workwear for Lee Jeans. And on the ads for Viva Paper Towels. Hon, Mike's coming. Let's get cracking. Those really are his parents. On Labor Day 2008, he launched the website Micro Works with the goal of highlighting America's skills gap. The fact that at a time of high unemployment, there is a shortage of skilled labor, an issue Roe addressed before the Senate Commerce Committee. In general, people are surprised that high unemployment can exist at the same time as a skilled labor shortage, but they shouldn't be. We've pretty much guaranteed it. In high schools, the vocational arts have all but vanished. And we've elevated the importance of higher education to such a lofty perch that all other forms of knowledge are now labeled as alternative. Now, get ready to get dirty. On Dirty Jobs, Roe shows us exactly what real work looks like. Are you kidding me? This is a crazy job. With all its risks, this is a dangerous place. Very dangerous. You get burnt. And smells. How do you guys do this every day? All its sweat. That's a nice one there. What makes it nice? All its humor. How long have you been doing this? 40 years. 40 long years. And all its necessity. People think I'm a spokesman for blue-collar America. I'm not. I'm a fan. <laughs> 